And, and I was like, oh, now this isn't working. Got another problem. Now I go to the third person narration. I thought this is what I was trying to avoid all along. Another hopefully well written book set in Nazi Germany. So I came back to death, and it was only when I asked, what is the unexpected? Always the great answer. If the, or, the, or the great question, what if this isn't working, what's the opposite? And so I thought, what if death was actually vulnerable? What if death was actually afraid of humans and haunted by us? By doing this job of cleaning up all the souls and seeing all the terrible things that we do to each other, what if you wrote it in that voice? And so for me, the initial thought was, I actually, honestly, there was no thought. Sometimes you just do something and you don't know why. For, I mean, and some, some of the main ingredients of this book, Death as Narrator, I've written a short story with a class in a school where I used Death as Narrator and I thought, oh, I could just bring that into this book that I've got in Nazi Germany with no other thought. And then I thought, oh, actually, it makes sense. People say that war and death are like best friends. Who better to be hanging around during wartime to tell a story? And, uh, and so, yeah, the whole thing did just make sense to me, that death would be on hand to, to tell this story, and he's haunted by humans, and he just wants to t talk about one beautiful story that he saw in the ugliest of times. And, uh, and so hopefully that's what I think adds to, to the novel. And honestly, I think it's what's given the book a lot of its attention, this idea of death being the narrator. Sorry, that was a very long and convoluted answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, 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 listening to you answer the question, death gives a story which is largely, well, any story that takes place in Nazi Germany is a mm. story, but it gives it a sense of remove, you know, mm -hmm. whereas if you, if you have Liesl narrate the story, you're right in the middle of the story and you keep waiting for it to turn into the diary of Anne Frank. Whereas yeah. if, by having death narrate the story, there's a slight dramatic distance grief. Yeah, well, yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that because it also reminded me that, yeah, it was this idea of being removed and, and, so, and he could also then just say something like, you know, and then, you know, this happens, you know, then there was the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And then, then and so he could sort of like take himself off to, to, to show us what was happening in the world and that, that I don't think I would have been able to have Lisa do as effectively. It also freed me up in terms of language, because I just thought, oh, now I can, with death as a narrator, I can really write in a way that I really, that I really like to write in that. You know, his use of imagery and, and things like that is just, it, it just allowed me to play a lot more with the writing itself. And so I really loved um, the idea of being able to have death say things like, the sky who was wide and blue and magnificent, or the trees who were standing to the left, or the ground who, you know, um, who, you know, who was over there. I wanted death to speak of the sky and the trees and the clouds and everything as if they were colleagues, as if death and all of those things are just part of the same thing and part of us. And so, oh yeah, I just wanted death to be like us, but slightly left or right, as in it's like the missing piece of humans trying to understand the rest of us, you know, the rest of, of uh, what it is like to be human and how we can do these horrible and beautiful things at the same time. The part of the natural world we see, what we don't see rather, even though it's next to us. Yeah, yeah, so, so death just, I don't know, and I, and I think anytime you write something you also have to have fun, and I know it doesn't sound like much fun to be writing about Nazi Germany or the Holocaust or, you know, these, you know, particularly grim subject, subjects, but you still have to write for the love of writing as well. And, and if nothing else, I mean, I thought this book would be my least successful book by a mile. And, uh, and it freed me up thinking that no one would ever read it. And I just wrote a pure part of it. And, uh, and maybe that does come through and I'm happy for that, if nothing else. Okay, just a good question. Did Max have a lifetime of ill, Ill health post-war? Oh, um, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
in my mind, no. And it's funny because I'll, I'll, I'll use this question to answer another question as well, which may be there. Um, Max goes off to do whatever the reader wants him to do. Uh, just like, you know, you, you close a, a book or you, a movie finishes, and we do start to take them, these characters down the road a bit. And, uh, and I've, never, that's, I've never been asked that question before. And, uh, and I, I like to see Max as really, you know, he just starts a new life the same way Lisa does. And, uh, and yeah, he goes off to live a full life. And the, the, the question that is asked more is, do Lisa and Max? Yeah. Is that who she marries? And, and that's where I say, well, that's really up to the reader. That's also a problem. Uh, but that's, you that's leave, whatever. You leave that ambiguous before. Yeah, and I, to be honest, I didn't mean to. Because, you know, you know I don't know what, when I'm right. <laughs> you know, um, I have an idea. But sometimes I, I didn't mean for that to be an open thing when people would go, oh, did they get married or not? And what I, I just intended to show that he was okay and that he came back and that all these twists of fate and all of these things like um, Hans Huberman making the fatal, or not fatal mistake, but the terrible mistake of giving bread to the man on the street, which jeopardised Max in his basement ended up saving Max's life. And, uh, but it was more just the idea that Matt, when people ask me, do Lucille and Max get married? I say, well, you'll call me unromantic if I say no. But it's actually more romantic that they don't. Because one of them, there are about four reasons, I think, that I feel like they don't get married and get together in the end. And the first is that, um, I saw them as a brother and sister relationship. Second is, um, I just felt like they went through so much that they had to go and just start new lives on their own. The third, and now I can only think of three. I think I to do the third is just a simple age difference thing. But the fourth one is the most important, and that is that I felt like there was that this book was kind of a love story, corny as that sounds, and that is there's Lisa in the middle, and there's the love between her and her foster father, and her foster mother, and Max, and books, and Rudy, and it was the relationship with Rudy, and Rudy was my favourite character in the book, and it was sort of like if Rudy can't have her, no one can have her. 